This week on the Music Biz Weekly, episode 125, Brian and I talk about how you can improve your career by being authentic and thankful. Thank you. Namaste. (laughs) You're listening to the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, your go-to resource for music marketing advice, music industry news, and discussion on the latest technologies in the digital music marketplace. And now, and now, and now, please welcome your host, Michael Brandbold from Michael Brandbold Marketing, and Brian Thompson from Thorny Bleeder. Take it away, boys. Go! Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly. This is episode number 125, and I'm Brian. How the hell are you? How the hell are you? I am well. (laughs) Michael Branvold, how are you? We're doing good. Yeah? I feel like you and I are both probably getting back up to speed. Slowly but surely, it takes a while to recuperate after, not recuperate, but to uh, catch up on... To get your momentum back. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. We lost our momentum while we were both taking a little bit of an end of summer break. And uh, yeah, it takes a while to recover. I I, I would describe my momentum as this this was how I was taught to drive a car in winter and snow. So this might be something you can relate to. You never come to a complete stop (laughs) once you're moving because if you're at a complete stop your tires are just gonna go so you do the creep right up to that stop sign but as long as the wheels are rolling a little bit you can get it going again (laughs) yeah just keep rolling just keep rolling exactly so i feel like that's what what you and i have probably done over the last four to six weeks is we've come to that Real slow creep, but now we got to get it going again. I know. Well, as you know, that's uh, it's a good time of year to do that when um, you know all the all the runts are back in school and the streets are a little bit quieter and there's less distractions walking around in bikinis. Ah, uh, that's your distraction, huh? <laughs> well, you know, here where I live, every time you look out the window, it's like Jesus. Out your uh, window, really? Where? Ah. I'm, I'm blocks from the beach. And, uh, it just I live, strolls by. It just strolls by. And all, are you familiar with... No, I won't get into that. Anyway, today's episode <laughs> is... Anyway, Brian's girlfriend will not be listening to this episode. <laughs> today's episode is uh, nothing but a bunch of bullshit. It's uh, two guys bullshitting about um, whatever we... Uh, basically, it's our excuse for not having a planned topic. We do have a special guest... Knock next week. on wood next yeah. week. Yeah, Which next week. Which could be a very interesting perspective. It's a musician who also works for a label. So That's right. He, he's a he's an independent musician, has recorded a number of albums, but he's also uh, got a, like an A&R management type role at a record label. So kind of an interesting perspective. Totally. Um, so uh, how about personal personal stuff? What's happening in your world? Is uh, I know you've uh, you've got a couple new clients. Um, any any other exciting stuff besides you've got a got a, a baby little, coming? You've got a baby coming very very soon. Very very soon. Like this this beautiful home office that I have um, in less than a week is going to be gone because it becomes the baby's room. Uh oh, the baby is taking over yep. the uh, the kiss room. Yep, the kiss room, the home office, the man cave, whatever you want to call it. I've given it up to the baby, and I found a shared office space in San Francisco that I'm moving into this coming weekend. So it will be interesting to see how that moving of an office transition happens. Of what's the internet connection going to be like, and how quiet is the office going to be, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a whole new environment what, for what, the... What, what, what I know is, at least initially, you're not going to see a baby on my lap while I'm recording this. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> that wouldn't be distracting at all. No, not at all. 
<laughs> so yeah, that that's uh, baby and moving are the the big things right now. Baby's coming end of October. So you've got a whole other world of momentum about to hit your your life. Oh, yeah, every it's just like everything is going to change, and I have no idea what everything is. Yeah, I mean it's like yesterday I had to go to the doctor to get a couple shots, some vaccines because you know babies don't come out immune to everything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they would. I mean, yeah. go figure. So yeah. I walk in, and in, in this arm, I got the flu vaccine. And in this arm, the the Tdap, that they call it, which it's like um, whooping cough, I don't know, three right. different things that you get vaccinated for. Three and things that can kill you, and they're like, and then they just shove it in you. Uh, well, the, the, the needle didn't bother me one bit. But that shot, for whatever reason, now, 24 hours later, it feels like somebody just punched the hell out of my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I had the flu shot a couple of times, and that's it, many years ago. And, yeah, it felt like I had, like, a, a bruised arm for, like, almost a week. Yeah, I, I, I have no problems with the needles. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, no, yeah. no, no biggie. Now, now both my shoulders are like, holy crap, I just got beat up. <laughs> All these little things that... I don't know. I thought babies just came ready. Yeah, ready to go. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you actually have to care for them too. God, yes, I was I, I, funny. I'm I'm reading a baby book, and this guy, this doctor's written by Gene Simmons. Exactly. <laughs> um, this doctor's philosophy is babies really need to stay in for an extra three months to really come out prepared and ready. But the reason they don't stay an extra three months is. Their heads would get too big to come out, so physically a woman couldn't give birth to a baby three months older. Right. But he said, development-wise, it would make a lot more sense if they stayed for an extra three months because they'd they'd come out a lot more ready to deal with things. Well, you could just like wrap them in saran wrap or something and plug them in with a. Never mind. <laughs> um, what kind of dad are you going to be? Man, I don't know. I'm used to having a dog, and that's right now that's the extent of my daddy issues. There you go. Two dogs uh, today. Yeah, I've got, I've got, uh, I can't say her name because she'll come uh, she, you just have to, like, literally, you sneeze and she wags her tail. She's like, get so excited. Uh, so music wise, um, what's, uh, what's, what's going on today? What are we talking about? Hey, before, uh, before we, I've got a bit of a segue into something, um, that just made my day on top of having a conversation with you. If I'm not looking at you, it's not because I'm bored. It's because I'm running an iOS seven upgrade on another computer over here. And how how long has that been so far? Well, it upgraded my iPhone just fine. Okay. The iPad it popped up the error message of we cannot upgrade servers busy right now. So, right. I think Apple is getting hit with the everybody's trying to download all at once right now. Now, do you have the iPhone five? I've got the iPhone five. Right. So it probably went pretty pretty smoothly for you then. It it seemed to go pretty smoothly, and I've I've looked at it and um. It's, First impression? It's visually, it's way different. Oh, yeah, completely. Way right? different. And, you know, you got to really get used to some of these things. Like, the first thing I noticed, and I don't know if you do this, but I use a lot of folders to organize my apps. Yep. And you could put a lot of um, apps in the yep. folder. Well, now they've made the folder smaller. Oh, it's a maximum of nine. It's a maximum of nine, but you can change to a second screen within that folder. Oh, I'll never look at the second screen. I know. I'm, that was my first thought. Was like, <laughs> oh, never. fuck me. Now I got to remember that there's a second screen holding. So, so now it's like, all right, which of you apps is going to be the unfortunate app to go to the second yeah. screen and never get opened again? Okay, here, here's a total nerd question. Which of your iPhone folders has the most apps in it? Which, what's the subheading? Um, utilities. I've actually got like three utilities folders just filled with utilities app. Oh, wow. But, but here, the, the folder that gets used every day is I created a folder on, on the bottom row here that's always there. It's called, yeah. da it's called Daily. Yeah. And in there has got Mail, Facebook, Hootsuite, Messenger, YouTube, Pages. 
all of the apps that I literally use on an everyday basis are in this one folder. Makes Wouldn't sense. that make... But shouldn't that just be your home screen? Because then they're one tap instead of two taps away. Um, but I pretty much keep this... I used to keep this open because I could see them all. Now I've got, got to flip to the second page. My right. home screen's got other things like um, my Bank of America app and, and TuneIn Radio and Skype. So this is sort right. of like the daily... Almost social media. App. My uh, my most full folder is my photography folder. There's just so many little apps where this app handles does photo editing better than this one, and this one uh, has a little bit better HDR tweak, and this one has some cool presets. Next thing you know, I have like yeah, twelve photography apps or whatever i i used to be that way and i try and get to the point where it's like oh gee i haven't opened that app in six months Delayed, well, I try, gone yeah I, I do the same uh i typically treat my iphone the same way as i treat my closet same thing if i haven't touched anything within six months yep. or a year it's out of there you might be the coolest app or the coolest t-shirt in the world but listen if i haven't used you in six months i'm sorry don't take it personally but you're going that's right. And by the way, so, your video just got pixelated. Ah, damn. I don't know why it does that. I've got um, nothing else running. Uh, I don't know why. It's just uh, a Skype thing. So, sorry, YouTubers, if my face looks like a jigsaw puzzle right <laughs> now. Um, He's blurred out for witness protection. Yeah, well, what I'm about to show you, this just happened this morning, and I just, uh, since we're bullshitting, I'm going to share something very cool, which I think has, not I think, I know has some good takeaways for uh, the music industry and for developing artists and for any artist. I was sitting here working on uh, the DIY Daily this morning when there was a little knock at the door, and I look over, and there's a mailman holding a package, and I wasn't expecting any package, and... This gets me uh, uh, mixed emotions when I have to sign for something. Either it's really <laughs> good news, it's, it's, it's like a brilliant, cool surprise, or it's like, you've been served. Right, or something exactly. Like that, right? So I go, and luckily enough, it's a nice little padded envelope. I'm like, ooh, somebody sent me something. And not many people have my home address. I do have a P.O. box where stuff goes, so uh, it caught me a little off guard. But when I opened it up, there was a little gift in here that I'm holding up. It's so blurry we can't read it. The authentic swing. swing. Now, uh, yeah, sorry for the blurriness. Uh, this is a brand new book from Stephen Pressfield, one of my favorite authors, the guy who wrote The War of Art and uh, Turning Pro, uh, uh, two of the, the Bibles of any creative person out there, in my opinion. Um, anyway, his publicist... Uh, connected with me last year because I frequently talk about uh, the War of Art or I read some of Stephen Pressfield's um, blogs sometimes on my daily podcast. And his publicist discovered me because I was talking about Stephen on Twitter last year. Mm -hmm. She then sent me an email saying, thanks for talking about one of my guys. And I'm like, well, you're welcome. He's awesome. I wasn't doing it for anybody right. other than just, right. a, just a fan. Um, so that blew me away. That uh, and she did it in a very cool way too. And she just reached out to say thanks. That was it. Not asking anything of me. Just thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you're very welcome. Um, and then uh, I can't remember the exact court how, way things went. Uh, I think I was like, huh. I'm now. I now have uh, a direct connection to one of my favorite authors. This is really cool. So then. Since I'm recommending War of Art so much, I sent her a quick email going, would you guys be interested in doing a book giveaway on my site? And she was like, sure. Next thing you know, she sent me like another package of like five books to give away on my blog. So that was really cool. Nice. And then I haven't heard from her in probably a year, and this shows up unannounced, no tweet, no email, just here you go, the new book from that author that you really like. And she wrote inside a handwritten message wow saying hi brian it's been a while since we've been in touch i hope this finds you doing well just wanted to send along steve's newest book 
uh, with the hope that you'll enjoy it and with many thanks for being supportive of sharing his work in the past. Handwritten, signed, not asking anything of me, just keeping in touch, keeping me in the loop with that person, that, that artist that I'm a fan of. And to me, it's just such a rare thing to see that physicality, that, that, uh, that connection where she's not asking me to, to... Well, you didn't ask for anything, and she didn't ask for anything. Exactly. It's genuine. It is genuine. It's authentic, and it's done with the real goal of just sharing. I, want, I was talking about him because I wanted to share with my audience somebody that I was connected to. Yep. She then thanked me for thank you for talking about my client. That means a lot to me as someone who's working with somebody I believe in. And then it just kind of kept on reciprocating back and forth. And now a year later, almost, uh, here it is again. Um, unannounced, unexpected, completely surprised. And, um, as, I mean, I, I couldn't be any more of a fan of the guy. And now all of a sudden, well, maybe I am a little bit more. Uh, so I just think that this is how you do music publicity. Uh, just how, you know, this is called the authentic swing, uh, which is a golf analogy. Well, I think publicity is also the long game. <laughs> well, I wouldn't even say, don't don't narrow it to just publicity. Well, yeah, this, this, yeah. this, this is how you do. This is how this you is do how- relationships with your fans, with with business partners, with anything. Because, you know, I've had a few occasions where where, you know, a band would do that sort of thing. Just out of the blue, they wouldn't send you a package, but out of the blue, the band member emails you and says, hey, here's the new song we're working on in the studio. You know, yeah. you, you, I'd love to have you listen to it. You didn't ask for it. That's the type, exactly what you're doing. So yeah. don't, uh, you listeners, don't think this is how your publicist has to do it. This is how you should be relating right to your fans through Facebook and Twitter. And, and industry. So, I mean, for example, this is how bands get on to um, amazing festivals like Bonnaroo or South by Southwest or Coachella even. Like, whatever. It's by nurturing a relationship and not uh, pushing yourself too hard. And um, it's these long, like you said, it's these long-term relationships that eventually pay off because no one's abusing each other. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and don't do this stuff with some intention of something coming out of it, even if it's not right away. Meaning, yeah. don't send somebody something because your hope is in two months they're going to write about you. Yeah, because, you don't help Because that, that, that comes out. Eventually... The other side is going to realize you're kind of just stroking them. Absolutely. And that sort of takes the shine off of what just happened. Well, yeah, you don't help the old lady across the street just in anticipation of her handing you a $5 tip. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You, you do it for no other reason than you want to do it, you want to yeah. be nice, and don't get pissy yeah. if nothing comes from it. And... To me, what this what this shows me is, you know, somebody clearly, I think, has their foot a little bit in the old world of doing things because this type of thing, I think, was so much more common 10, 15 years ago. Um, and it's nice to see this. I mean, typically, I don't like physical items anymore. I'm a very digital guy. But when it comes to your favorite, somebody who's your favorite of anything, I mean, you know, you're a collector. Mm-hmm. It's that tangible thing does mean a lot. Sure. Um, and it reminds me of like when I was working in the day at, uh, at retail in, in a record store, um, those labels that kept a great relationship with me, just out of the blue, they would pick up the phone and just say, how's it going, man? Like, it's going great. What's, uh, uh, what, what's up? What's up? What do you need? What do you I, need? I, I, don't, I don't have any reports for you. Oh, I'm it's not like, looking uh, for the reports. No, I'm not looking for a report. I just wanted to say hi. I haven't talked to you in about a couple of months. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm good. What's good? Do you have time to talk? Uh, sure. What about? Uh, I don't have any room in this week's advertisement for you. No, man. Just, it's like, oh, right. oh, okay. Well, yeah, let's actually just have a talk. And the next thing you know, you, you finished having a 45-minute bullshit session about nothing, but 
it's like, yeah, that it, it's just it makes someone endearing to you and it makes you want to do business with someone, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the simplest form, what what we're kind of getting at, and I've and I've sort of preached this for a long time, it's what your mother would always tell you. Be polite and say thank you to people. And and, and that's all this is, whether that thank you is just words or hey, thanks Brian for mentioning us. Here's a book. We'd love to have you take this book yeah you just do it to be nice and to be polite and so many people i don't know why if it's like the bad part of human nature can't say thank you yeah i just see that all the time people just it's the hardest thing for them to say those two words yeah i don't know what it is um I think uh, a lot of it has to do with we're so wrapped up in our own heads. Um, we take a lot of things for granted. Um, and I think like, uh, like smiling, like laughing, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Oh, like yeah. It, like, you yeah. know? I mean, and, and especially in this day and age of social media where you're on all these networks, and I get this all the time from clients of, I just don't have time to respond to every single fan and and get into conversations. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You don't have to do that. I, I understand the realities. But two words is all you've got to say. Or one word. If you're really lazy, yeah. abbreviate it to thanks. You know what? Um, uh, a mutual friend um, of ours, Solve, uh, mentioned something to me a couple of weeks ago. And she sent me, uh, we're having this, uh, a, a Twitter conversation. And she said, by the way, thanks for teaching me the phrase, that means a lot to me. And I was like, whoa, okay, you're welcome, and thanks. Right. <laughs> um, I, I guess that is something that I say quite frequently. I mean, I don't overuse it, and I, when I say it, I mean it. Um, but I do like to tell people, thank you. Like what you just said, that means a lot to me. I'm not just saying thank you just as a, a out of politeness. That right. really does mean a lot to me. And I often say that, thanks, that means a lot to me. And I apparently that resonated with her and she's now um, saying, trying to consciously say it more herself. And she was like, yeah, it feels good to say it. It does, it, it, it does feel good to be nice, to be polite. Yeah. To, 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 to be that way with people. A lot of times, I'm guessing you've got a black lab under there that's way no. too scale. Or is it even, Coda? Dude, even funnier. Let me show you something. Carry on. <laughs> no, we want to see this. All of a sudden, we were talking, and I heard this, these sounds hitting the floor. I had rocks falling out of my shoe. Oh, as I. <laughs> it sounded like a dog. See this? This is a pair of shoes that desperately ne needs right, to go so in the garbage can. Hit the subscribe and donate button on Brian's <laughs> website so he can buy some new tennis shoes. I wear these chucks until they are literally falling off my feet, and I'm sitting here and rocks are falling out of my, the holes in my shoes. How, how can you be walking with rocks in your shoes? Isn't that uncomfortable as hell? I did not know I had rocks in my shoes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think the little things like my, I think the point there is it's it's it feels good to feels really good to express gratitude. It does. Um, you feel and, good about it, and and if the person you express it to actually appreciates it, appreciates it from you, it makes you feel even better. It's a win-win. And that, I think, is at the heart of this, is gratitude. Was uh, it, it just kept on going back and forth. And that's kind of the beautiful thing, is it's like a game of tennis. It's like, no, you be grateful. No, 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 you be grateful. No, no, you be grateful. You know, this, this comes back to something, we, we've, we've mentioned this too, so taking it back to music and bands, you're a touring band, you're playing clubs, dives, bars, whatever. Walk up beginning of the show before your set starts, and hand a beer to the sound man. Yeah. Just say, hey, here, thanks. Appreciate it. I've, That's uh, it. He may uh, not drink the beer. That doesn't matter. It's the gesture. 
I had uh, a band that I used to manage who after one of their first gigs in Vancouver, it was an out-of-town band, they, uh, they knew that the sound guy was going to be doing a lot of sound for them in the future. He was one of the guys from like the major uh, providers of sound in the city that does a lot of sound. And after their first gig, they were very happy with how it went. The lead singer, the lead singer, who had quite the persona on stage, and they were quite a celebrated band, they walked, he walked up to the lead singer and handed him a $20, $20 bill and said, thanks for the killer sound tonight, buddy. It meant a lot to me. It made the difference for all of us on stage. And this, I was there, and his jaw literally dropped. This is, was, uh, is an angry, bitter, bit of a jaded guy who's been in the industry a long time. Incredibly talented. But, I mean, his, you know, he's working till 4 a.m. every and night. Let's be honest. He's, and he's, 99% of the bands he's dealing with probably treat him like shit. Yep. And he gets treated like a grunt. And he gets treated like a roadie, but he is a, you know, he's been doing this for years. He's a seasoned professional. He's an expert master at what he does. And for someone to treat him the way he should be treated made that band stand out above everybody else in the scene. And the next time he did their sound, they got the royal treatment. Oh, yeah. It's just... you. Stop and think. I mean, years ago when I lived in Chicago, um, there was a, a very well-known bar club called the Thirsty Whale. And a lot of the bands that I worked with would play the Thirsty Whale. And you know, you get there at 4 in the afternoon, 3 in the afternoon, you're setting up gear. The sound man is already there because he's mic and stuff. And once your gear is set up and mic'd, You'd hop off the stage, and right next to this club was a hot dog stand, Gene and Jude's hot dogs. And you'd go over there, and we'd get our dinner. But yeah. guess what? The poor sound man is still stuck in there because he's now taking care of band number two, band number three of the night, band number four of the night. We would always try and like, hey, pick up an extra hot dog and fries, bring it back, give it to the sound man. Because Absolutely. that poor guy can't get out and have dinner. Yeah. I mean, just think of that type of stuff. Totally. I mean, it's it's a golden rule, right? Um, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, it's you know, you gotta treat people the way you want to be treated, and there is it goes beyond just um, you know serving to better relationships or better opportunities coming your way. It shouldn't be done in a self serving manner. It can also uh, help. Yep. Should also be. It can really truly help your art as well and there is a blog post that I shared last week on my newsletter I can't remember where what site it was from if you go to the DIY daily and search for it it'll be there but it was um, I think the title of it was if you want to create better things be a better person yeah and it was a really great post that um, Gave it like some real like hard to argue with points on how being a better person does help you create your art and create whatever it is that you're creating um, a lot more truthfully. And there's more heart and soul that goes into it if you're um, if you're actually happy with yourself as a human. <laughs> yep. It, well, no, exactly. I mean, if you're not happy, nobody else is going to be happy. Yeah, if you're not, if you're unhappy, and if you're a grump, and if you're a bitch, and if you're um, testy, you're angry. It's going to flavor everything you do. Yep, yep. And 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 it's it's funny. My my wife gets this way with me. She's like, because I'm the type of person who will get up in the morning and I work through lunch and I work through dinner and it's eight o'clock and I'm like, holy crap, I forgot to eat today. And she's like. Go eat right now. I'm like, why? I'm fine. She's like, no, because you're going to get cranky as <laughs> hell. Go eat. And I'm like, I'm not cranky. <laughs> I'm not crabby. Don't tell me that. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a second. I am. You may not realize it, but yeah. everybody around you is realizing this. Yeah, maybe it's time for a sandwich, Michael. Exactly. Where can I get the IV 
nutrients dripped into me. You know, that's what I want. Well, and to be 100% honest, that's why I quit drinking. Is uh, I realized that even a glass of wine the night before would affect my sleep. And I would, I'm grumpy without proper sleep. And the old, it's, it's unfortunate, but the older you get. Um, oh, listen, I've, I've always been a believer in a good night's sleep, all the way back to starting in college. Yeah. It's like, all right, do I want to stay up and cram until 4 a.m. for that test that happens at 8 a.m.? Or do I go to bed at 10 p.m., get a good night's sleep, come in sharp and alert? I would yeah. always go for the good night's sleep yeah. because... I'm sorry, for me, that makes a world of difference. Yeah, I learned that lesson a little late in life. <laughs> <laughs> I was always burning the candle at both ends. I would go to bed late and I would be up early. Uh, even in the early days of recording this podcast, if I go back and listen to some episodes, it's like, ooh. I love yeah. getting up early, quite oh, honestly. I, yeah, for me, that's... Uh, Which is but, ironic because, you know, talk to my dad and he'd be like, you know, I remember high school and stuff like that, getting you out of bed to go to your first class at 8 a.m. Yeah. was like torture. And now I'm like, please, it's 5 a.m. and I'm wide awake going, you know, I want to get up. I want to. Well, that's part of it. You want to get up and you want to do something you love. Well, exactly. Right. Um, it, it's hard to get your ass out of bed if there is nothing but pain on the other side right. of it. Right. <laughs> the pain of. Being teased so if you at love your band, your you love you your music, as Martin Atkins would say, get the fuck out of bed. That's right. Get the fuck out of bed. And get onto your computer. Exactly. <laughs> Write a blog post, god damn it. Just say thank you. Get up, send an email, make a Facebook post, and say thank you to somebody for something they did. Hey, I'm going to say something which maybe a few of you will uh, say thank you, Brian, for. I stumbled upon an amazing, very simple, beautiful way to make um, a new website. Not a blog. It doesn't have a blog function. But uh, this service that I stumbled upon, wow, it makes really beautiful uh, web uh, iPad friendly. You know, I, I guess I kind of want to call it Web 3.0, how the, all these websites are vertical scrolling right. now. It, is that kind of Web 3.0? Is Are we there yet? I don't know if we're technically there yet. I don't know. So mobile ready. Uh, what do responsive they call it? Responsive design. I was going to say adaptive, responsive design. Um, this site is fantastic, I think, for making like a product landing page. So let's say you have a new album. You could make a website dedicated just to this album or maybe to a tour or maybe a book or maybe whatever. Um, the site is called Strikingly. Strikingly.com. Okay. Check it out. Um, it's very, very visual in that it uses very large photos, um, blurred and scaled back it does have uh which and then with text over top of it so it has a very uh graphic and typographic look to it it looks incredibly current it's super easy it has a fr it's free if you put a, a page on there strikingly.com but if you want your own domain name um i think it's eight bucks a month okay uh, which I think, again, if you're launching uh, a product or a tour or something, anything long term, you know, that's, I think, a fairly reasonable price to although, pay. Although, keep in mind, here's a little tip. That's if you want this website to stay under that domain name all the time. Right. You could take your domain name and just redirect it to theirs. <sighs> of course, so, yes. So you could still, you could still advertise bandabc.com. Tell yeah. people to go to bandabc.com. When they do, you just set it up on your server's back end that that domain just automatically redirects them to the strikingly.com domain. Perfect. Yeah. And, that's, and then uh, you get buy for free. Yeah. Um, now, that does require a little bit of web knowledge. Um, but if somebody understands what you just said, um, they can quickly Google it and they can figure that out using their web host right away. Yep. Um, 
But the point is, my point is, is that I just stumbled upon it recently and I showed it to a class that I had the other night and they were just like, wow, it's beautiful. I'm like, I know, I want to, I want to make a page just for, I don't even know what yet, but uh, maybe for my, the book that I'm working on, maybe I'll uh, make a strikingly page for that. Um, anyway, that's it. I just wanted you to know, toss that out. And, and I'll throw this out there. One of our past guests um, from patreon.com. Yeah, Jack. Yeah. Um, I don't know when was he on three weeks, four weeks ago, maybe something. Oh, like a that. little bit longer than that ago now, I think. Um, I'm gonna give Patreon a try. Oh, nice for one of my um, podcasts, the Three Sides of the Coin podcast. Awesome. I don't know how it's gonna work. I'm just yeah. I've set it up. It's very easy to set up. I haven't announced it yet, but it'll be. It's one of these things where I want to try it to get some feedback so I can see how it works yeah. if it's got some legs to it. Um, but hopefully, you know, over the next month, couple months, I can have some feedback on That's actually cool. using Patreon to see if you can drive some donations and support for a project. Well, you know, I mean, it's been, you know, I, I've had donations up on Thorny Bleeder and the DIY Daily for well over a year now. And I've had monthly plans as well, I still do, which is actually right before this call, I was redoing a, uh, a new graphic <laughs> for my donations page. Um, and that's been the one thing that's holding me back during a Patreon campaign is because, I mean, I think Patreon is perfect for me because I crank out content every day. But I already have a, a monthly donation package set up where I don't have to share um, a percentage with anybody as I would with Patreon. Well, other than the PayPal fees, right? Other than the PayPal fees. Right, right. Yeah, but I think Patreon takes what fifteen twenty percent. No, I think I, it's it's a total of, if I read correctly, eight percent. Eight percent. Three percent for processing and five percent for themselves. And then do they send that to PayPal? And then I think it just goes to your PayPal account. Right. Right. Anyway, yeah, I'm anxious to see how your um, how your experiment goes because I know you, that podcast is um, it's, attracting. It, yeah, it's at least got a fan base now that yeah. I feel like I could take it out to some, have some people um, give it a shot, which brings up something you and I were just talking about yesterday. We haven't quite launched it yet. Ah, uh, But I, yes. did, I did launch this on my Three Sides of the Coin podcast. We're going to set up. Oh, you did you did do one with I the... did one on three sides of the coin and that that's how I found out. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a Google Voice number. Do you have the number? Can we should we um, talk about it? Yeah, yeah. It well why is. not? Because I mean I can have it set up in a day on my end. Yeah. Well I don't ha I don't yeah, I don't have the Music Biz Weekly phone number yet. Oh, oh okay, you don't yet. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Because this is what, what I found out. I went in and I created a Google account for Music Biz Weekly. Yeah. And then I went in and was going to set up the Google Voice number. I've always had a Google Voice number for my business. Right. When I set it up, because you've got to assign a phone number to the back end of the Google Voice free number. Even though you don't have it being forwarded to it, you still have to have a number. Verification Verification. Purposes. Yeah. So I've had my mobile number. And all of a sudden, I got an email from Google saying, okay, great. You've assigned your mobile number to this new Google Voice number. We've taken it away from your other one and I'm oh, like no. I'm like oh holy shit <laughs> I didn't know that was happening Don't do that Thankfully they said if you didn't intend to do that and you want to revert back click this link and reclaim it and blah 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 Right So that then led me to Google how can I have more than one Google voice number associated to one phone number And can you You can have two numbers associated to one phone number Basically what you have to do is in Google Voice it says this phone number, is it a mobile number, a home number, or a work number? Even if it's mobile, don't tell it it's mobile. Oh, okay. That's the, that's the clincher right that's there. That's the ticket. You can say this mobile number is a home number for this Google of Voice account, and then on a second Google of Voice account, you say the same phone number is a work phone number. And there you've got two different Google Voice numbers, Right. associated to one phone number and you then just what i've done is you just turn off the forwarding so your phone never rings it just right. goes straight to voicemail google voice sends you a transcription and a link to listen to the messages but anyway right. 
we're going to set set that up for Music Biz Weekly. We're going to set up a phone number yeah. for Music Biz Weekly. So you guys starting we'll 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 have it done by the next show. Can yeah, call and, uh, in and leave us comments, questions. In fact, maybe perhaps um, by the time this is published in two days on Friday, the 20th of September, um, maybe there will be a Google number included in the show notes. Uh, yes. We might even be able to include a still graphic in the video that just says, here's the new number. Ah, there we go. Anyway, so the, the whole point here is uh, why we're doing this is it'd be really cool for you guys to be able to call in, not have to leave an email or tweet us or Facebook us. It's just another way to get a hold of us. And, and I think it's a, a cool way of incorporating your actual voice in this podcast. So what we're thinking... Which we can technically do. Technically. We can so we, download an MP3 file of a Google voicemail message. And that MP3 can be sucked into GarageBand or iMovie and can yeah. become part of the show. Yeah, so that's uh, really the deal is for, for us to get some either viewer questions, uh, viewer comments, um, ideas, thoughts recorded inputted into uh into the podcast and then we can just play it back and and um i don't know i just think it'd be a cool new feature yeah. so uh look for that coming soon and like i said it might be um we might even share it in the show notes for this very episode um what else do we got going on man what uh anything else you wanted to uh that's been no i think we got a couple interesting topics coming up that you know, I I want to delve into. Yeah, yeah. I think um, if we haven't already chatted for so long, I'd dive into one of them right now. But I think it's best left for another episode. Yeah, I, w I want I want to be able to spend more than just five minutes on some of those those topics. That's yeah. And and these are topics that are are being generated based off of our real experience in dealing with clients. Yeah. And I, I know from my standpoint that that's a lot of inspiration for me. Is, Absolutely. Is, hey, this isn't just theoretically what should happen. This is what happened when somebody else did or didn't do something. And hopefully you can take away real world well, um, knowledge and experience. Absolutely. And I think that's really been at the heart of this podcast right from day one is that uh, most of our stuff has been very hands on. It has been stuff that we've dealt with, things that we've learned ourselves, things that we've witnessed. Um, it's not just us, uh, whatever, pontificating out of a textbook. Right, right, right. This is very hands on uh, application stuff. So, yeah, so um, definitely there's some good takeaways in uh, some upcoming episodes. And hopefully on this one, like I said, this was an unexpected little reminder that happened that knocked on my door today about um, not asking anything of anyone and having um, just respecting the fans that you have who might also have an audience. Um, industry appreciating industry. It's... Uh, it's it was very cool to see that yep. this morning. Yep. Yeah. I mean that's just that's that's the core of what you need to be doing with your career in music. Well, here's the other thing. I mean, again, I already talked about it, but the handwritten note. And I know that um you know, some very smart retailers will employ their salesmen to do a similar thing. It's like don't send an email to your top clients. Write them a little handwritten thank you note. Yep. Put it in the mailbox. When was the last, ha, have any of you ever done that with uh, people that you've worked with? Written a, a little package of cookies and a thank you note to someone, to that radio station that added you to their playlist, to the magazine that did a, an article on you, even if it was minus five stars. Thanks for at least considering us. <laughs> to, to the fan who filled out your email list form at a show and also gave you their mailing address. I mean, yeah. I think we talked about this in a show a long time ago. They may have given you, even asked for their phone number. 
Imagine if you took a fan's phone number and the next day after a show just picked up the phone and called them and said, hey, thanks for coming out to my show. That'd be amazing. They'd be like, who are you? Oh, I'm yeah. so-and-so, the lead singer of the band you saw last night. You remember we chatted real briefly at the merch stand? Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'd be brilliant. So, you guys, um, I would love to hear your comments on this. Have you done anything that um, I think... It went above and beyond a fan's expectations. Have you done anything above and beyond um, what somebody in the industry, where they, you literally saw their jaw open? They're like, wow. Um, again, it's, it needs to be done authentically, but I think if we get in the habit of doing these things, it can be one of the very things that sets you apart from the rest of the crowd. Oh, it will definitely set you apart. I mean, just put yourself in the position of a fan. You've been yeah. to how many shows? How many times has anybody ever come out and personally thanked you, called you, mailed you? How many times has that ever happened in your career as being a fan? Yeah. Maybe enough to count on one hand. Maybe. Here's, here's uh, my closing thought. If you treat someone as special you will be special to them. That sounds like something Mr. Rogers would say. Hey, man, that guy was a smart, smart cat. (laughs) Hey, uh, you know what? Now's the time when we're going to press pause for a moment and we're going to hop on over to Music X-Ray. Because, you see, every week we feature a song on this podcast, and we never know who it's going to be until we hit pause, you see? So Music X-Ray, that's where we go. It's where all the tracks are coming in that you guys are sending to us, and I know that you are sending them because I get little email notifications each time someone hits that old submit button, and it's been dinging off the hook this week. So thanks for firing over all your tracks And if you're not firing over your tracks, well, then you certainly aren't going to hear your song on this podcast. That's just the way it works. We're not going to come to you and ask you for your song. No. In fact, I even had uh, a few form letter submissions sent to my email account that were very clearly copy and paste. I can see through you, by the way. Um, With MP3s attached, no thank you. That's not the way I do it. So uh, Music X-Ray, that's the workflow. That is our workflow. There are no shortcuts. Um, so, and while you're there, take a look because um, there's been some pretty high-profile opportunities that uh, Music X-Ray has listed um, this past week. Every Tuesday, they send out like a an email with some of their yep. their their highlight ones, and there's some big ones in there this week, including some major major publishing houses. If you don't have enough time to log into Music X-Ray and review every opportunity, at least read the email they send out once a week. Absolutely. Okay, let's hit pause, and uh, we'll be right back with um, hopefully a track that blows us away. Well, you know what? That was probably the quickest song selection we've ever done. That was like playing the slots, one pull, hitting the jackpot. We only listened to one song. That's crazy. That We've is. never done that. Let, let, yeah, let's be real honest. We okay. usually have to review a number of songs. Oh, sometimes it takes a while. Um, there's We get a lot of submissions. A lot of them uh, might sometimes be better suited for a AM uh, radio station in the early 70s. Um, <laughs> or some <laughs> rap hip-hop station. Yeah, and sometimes it... um, Anyway, the point is, uh, there never really is a a rhyme or reason how we we approach the the first... There's a batch of songs, and I often will just look at the list going, is there a name that grabs me? It's just, you got to start somewhere, so why not start with a name that captures your attention? Uh, Because here's a tip for you music x-rayers, um, before you hit submit, make sure your artist name is properly filled out. Otherwise, it will attach a string, nonsensical string yes. of numbers and characters. And, and we have seen that a few times. 
because uh, trust me, nine eight seven six asterisk at sign number sign dash uh, doesn't mean anything. You're not going to get picked. We're not even going to listen to that. Well, we do listen to it, but well, it's, you get it's, you, it. Let's put it this way: it gets pushed to the bottom of the pile week after exactly, week after week exactly. until until we get nudged by Music X Ray to say. Uh, you got to do something with that submission, and then yeah. we pay attention to it. Yeah. So anyway, so I did. I, I looked at the list here, and there was a bunch of songs as expected. But I thought, huh, rocket ships. That sounds cool. Let's hit play. And you know what? It delivered. So I think this is a great song. Um, so this band is from Windsor, Ontario. That's uh, the information I've grabbed within the last few minutes. Uh, Windsor, Ontario, uh, our alternative hard rock band, kind of uh, early or late 90s, early 2000s kind of vibe. And it's just a good rock and track. So um, this song is titled So Long. Again, it's by the band Rocket Ships. You can find them on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash rocket ships music and that's it that's all thanks so much for tuning in you guys um we will check back we might have that google voice number in the show notes of this podcast if not um if we do then call it leave a message we want to hear you yeah we want to we want to hear your stories your anecdotes your trials your tribulations your successes your failures anything but self-promotional spam yeah don't don't call and play your music no if you call and leave us a question or a comment, we may actually take it, address it, and play it and answer it in the next show. And if what you say, just be, you know, because what you say could actually turn into a whole podcast. Yeah. You never know. So if your question has enough merit, it is well thought out, and is something that we're like, you know what? This is something, yeah. Then absolutely. In fact, we might even get you as a guest. So, call the number. Local charges may apply. <laughs> <laughs> is it a one eight eight hundred number? No, it's going to be one nine hundred. So we can make three dollars off of every minute. No, seriously, Ooh. people, it's just going to be a regular old phone number. So you can call it however you would call anybody's phone, whether it's your landline, your cell phone, call from Skype, yeah, whatever. Call from Google itself. Exactly. Anyway, so uh, thanks, you guys. Uh, we'll, uh, thanks for pressing play. We'll see you again next week. I'm Brian from Thorny Bleeder. And I'm Mike Brandvold from michaelbrandvold.com. And this is Rocket Ships with the track So Long. That's actually a pretty good segue. Too long.
This podcast is brought to you by Music X-Ray, 21st Century A&R. Get deals, get fans, and get better. At Music X-Ray, it levels the playing field for musicians, giving you direct access not only to industry decision makers, but to fans too. Strike up a free account at musicxray.com and check it out for yourselves. And if you want your song to be included in podcasts like this, that's where you go to find these opportunities.